But let's move on into Pokemon Sun and Moon. We have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about Pokemon Sun and Moon since the last yeah. podcast that we had about it. Um, the last time we had any kind of detailed Pokemon Sun and Moon coverage, it was the last time you were on the podcast. So we thought, what better way to bring in all this new stuff than bring you on again? Before we go into the new Pokemon that they announced, the new mechanics, I want to talk about something called the Z-Ring. Um, the Z-Ring is a real-life accessory that's coming out, launching with Pokemon Sun and Moon. It interacts with the game. It's like a bracelet. If you're familiar with the Yokai Watch, it's very similar to the Yokai Watch that you can pop medals in, and then you can... I, I don't think... That doesn't interact with the game, does it? No, oh, it's standalone. It didn't think so. Yeah, it's just a toy. Except I hear Yokai Watch 3 in Japan has, like, an NFC medal that mm. does work with the game, but... Either way, the Z-Ring is something that you wear. It powers up your Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Moon. You can buy one of nine different crystals that you can put into the Z-Ring and power up your Pokemon in real life. Um, all the advertisements I've seen show little kids. And I guarantee you, every person I see playing this is going to be a grown-ass man. <laughs> and including myself, I'm going... And if it doesn't fit, I will duct tape it on my wrist. If I have to, I, true. I have no Very shame true. in this. I will be sporting a Z ring. It's already pre-ordered. I have all nine crystals pre-ordered. I can't freaking wait. Um, but it's definitely new. It's, it's, it's not, I mean, obviously we, we've seen things similar with Yokai watch. I want both of your opinions on this. Happily candied you being a toy collector yeah. and a Pokemon fan. I'm yeah. curious to see what you think about the Z ring. I think it's, I think it's fun. I like anything that interacts with games like this. Uh, even when toys to life came out through, through other, in other ways, um, yeah. it was around, I would say between 2000 and 2006 sometime, um, Hasbro came out with these plushies that, uh, you could buy and they would have chips around the, in their collars for the littlest pet shop. Oh. And you, you could interact with the games online with that, that same pet. And it wasn't to the, to the level that we have with, of the, with these uh, types of games and, and toys, which is really cool. Um, but still, it was kind of a, a way to show you this is the direction that technology and toys are heading in. Yeah. And um, now that I see that we've come so far in such little time. It's really cool. And I think this is even more exciting because I'm passionate very much about collectibles for one thing, yeah. especially something that's cool that you can fit on your own wrist. It's personal in that way. You know, it's, it's not just a toy. It's, it's an accessory for you and um, that you can communicate it with uh, a game that is, it just Pokemon sun and moon seems to me that it's, building more and more in character yeah. uh, with the with the number of features that we're being introduced to and the number of new Pokemon. And now that we're seeing so much more involved with like uh, the different forms. So everything piled on top, it just, it's building the hype for me. I'm honestly surprised Nintendo didn't try marketing this thing as an Amiibo. I could easily see them swing it in a way where they said this is an Amiibo. I mean, we have Amiibo cards, I could totally see like each crystal's an amiibo. You put it in right. this thing and it interacts with your game. But they are completely calling it something new. Um, Ken, what's your opinion? All right, so I, I'm I'm all about it. I, I love anything that's wearable tech, you know, in, in any capacity. Obviously, this is a toy. It's lo-fi, you know, but yeah. it, it's really cool. Now, for me, the couple things struck me. So it's called the Z-Ring, but it's a bracelet. Sure. So it was confusing to me in the beginning because when I was saw like the first early images, I was like, "Is that a is that an actual ring? It looks like bulky, you know, to actually fit on a kid's hand." Yeah. Um, but then you know, finally learning it was a bracelet, uh, and it's not adjustable. So I think Happily Candy <laughs> might be the only person that fits. It's very. Um, you know, I got like stumps. You know, so I have it's small like... girlish wrists. <laughs> so I should be okay. No, you have bigger, a lot bigger wrists than mine. But uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So I'm anytime sorry. I play the game, I'm going to be like, Happily ah! Candy. <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited for that. But, you know, the couple other things I thought were interesting, you can buy this pack of nine crystals, but the device itself only holds seven at a time. So you have six extra slots and you have the one active slot. Yeah. But then you're going to have two additional crystals with nowhere to put them. So that was kind of funky. Um, but... I think this all kind of goes hand in hand in how the trainer, the, the actual trainers themselves are playing a bigger role in Sun and Moon, you know, from starting with just being able to see them in the battle screen to, you know, now the Z moves that the, you know, the, the Z ring will power. 
Um, they're playing a much more uh, dynamic role in the battling system. So it, it's cool because that is kind of translated to the real world. And, you know, I'm sure my son is going to go ballistic, you know, really feel like the trainer uh, when he's playing. I know I am. And I'm going to, you know, I'm waiting for one of these custom artists just to make it fit my wrist, you know, <laughs> yeah. some do something to it. I'll be wearing like a Beastie Boys chain or something like that. But yeah. Um, yeah. I'm excited. You know, that's a really cool way to think about it, though. If you think about it with Sun and Moon and the Z-Ring, and then you think about Pokemon Go, Nintendo is attempting to bring the world of Pokemon to life. I mean, we're going out in the real world. We're interacting We're interacting with Pokemon. Uh, we're interacting with other trainers. And now we get to interact with an accessory that helps us connect even in more ways with Pokemon. So it's really... It's really kind of a cool way to bring it's almost like a this 3D world around us that we're kind of Pokemon are becoming the norm now, part of our world. Well, I'm gonna end up having a Pokemon Go Plus here, <laughs> my Z ring here, duct tapes on my wrist, because that's the only way it's gonna work. It's getting to the point where there's almost too many wearables. Too many There's too so many is wearables. There's such a thing. No, there's no such thing. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, one thing that's interesting, because you brought this up too with the the Z moves. Part of me is really curious to see what's going to end up happening with, obviously in Sun and Moon we have the Z moves, obviously we have the Alolan forms. Are Mega Evolutions dead? Well, that that was kind of what I was thinking. Like they're they're changing a lot of the core premises of the game with how gyms are kind of changing, and that has been a staple. And then you know with X Y bringing Megas in and. Can the crystal somehow, you know, be a replacement for Mega Evolution? Will that lead to Mega Evolution? I, I, I don't know. I, I hope not. I think yeah. the Megas are awesome. I mean, that's like one of my favorite, you know, things. And I mean, it, it's just I, I love the, the 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 size of Mega Evolutions and, and things like that. So I, I hope they don't go away completely. But it would be nice to have that kind of control where the, the Z ring and these crystals are going to be what can power that Mega, you know, be the trigger for the Mega Evolution. I don't know. I mean, we have, we have a long time till obviously the November launch and they have been like steadily bringing out information like almost once every two weeks now. Right. So that being said, I think we're going to get a lot of other things. So cross my fingers, but let's move into the, the, like the, the kind of the meat and potatoes of this. And I, I want to point out how this started. Um, it was an absolutely crazy week, how this, all of this information came out. First and foremost, we had a Cora Cora leak and the Cora Cora leak had a few things in it that we didn't know before. We'll get into that in just a second. Um, we reported on some of that. And then a day or two later, there was this massive leak that initially started on 4chan, which apparently leaks always start. But <laughs> yes. everybody takes it with a grain of salt that's, when it comes from 4chan. Okay, that's, it's nothing new. It's so old. <laughs> so this was huge. It, it had so much information. It had different Pokemon. It had different mechanics. It had new Alolan forms. It showed who the bad guys were. And they had screenshots. They had videos. There was no reason to think any of this was fake. And Nintendo was supposed to come out yesterday and release the trailer for Sun and Moon. And they ended up kind of forcing their hand, and they ended up releasing it a day early. But what ended up happening is we got this brand new trailer with a bunch of new Pokemon with a bunch of new Alolan forms. We got to find out who the bad guys are in this game, which is Team Skull, which we're going to get into in just a moment here. But I kind of want to start... I want to start with my least favorite first and then kind of move our way into, like, the thing that's going to blow my mind. The thing that already blew my mind. <laughs> oh, the thing that I'm more excited about than I anything. Wish, I wish I could have recorded you the last couple days. Gonda Chris has already made let's, me let's, a let's, custom let's, for Hold on, let's, thing, we'll get there. We'll get we'll, there. We'll get but Gonda Chris, if you're listening to this, I, I love you <laughs> for what you did. We're going to get into it. But first, let's start with the crap. We have... Oh. <laughs> We have um, Morlul. Morlul is a mushroom Pokemon. It looks like it is a grass fairy type. Another fairy type. How yep. many fairy types are in this gen? It's crazy how many fairy types are in this gen. And it, I don't know if that comes just it's if they're making it more region specific, like because there's you know the rainforests or you know they have these kind of mystical looking environments, or if they're just trying to introduce them to increase the count overall just yeah. because um but uh that was my thought initially cool. yeah um so we have morla who's a uh, pokemon that has three mushrooms on its head i'm guessing it's gonna have a evolution of some sort maybe two who knows what do you think about morla 
either of you. I'm really curious. It, it kind of just seems generic to me, but we need generic Pokemon. I mean, I anything with mushrooms, I'm in. <laughs> 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 so, but I think it's I think it's cute. I, I mean, it, it's really cool. It, it, it's it, it's super basic, and you know, whenever you see these kind of Pokemon that kind of look like you can just like blow them away with like a fan, yeah, you know, it's like oh, you know, how could this thing be fierce and you know, being you know, uh, someone that can in, have attacks? But um, you know, the cute factor is there, and you know, but super generic. But I, it's got shrooms. I like it. <laughs> Happily candid. I am indifferent. I, I could go one. I'm just. I go neither way at this point, just because I guess I'm more drawn to other Pokemon. I didn't put much that much thought into this one as much. Oh, I'm sorry. More I'm sorry. <laughs> what What I love though is the uh, thinking that maybe in a future evolution it's going to become something really, really badass. <laughs> you know, like something, something that is all of a sudden worth like. It's very noteworthy. <laughs> I I might be the kid here, but it just it has a very phallic feel to me. Oh. Um, no, that's not the kid in you. That's just you. <laughs> I I the first time I saw it, I'm like that that can't be a real Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> like the the color even on one of the mushrooms. Oh god. Uh, yes. But you know what? <laughs> Everything can not everything has to look like a penis, but some things do, and I have to point it out. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for always bringing this ray of sunshine into daily life. <laughs> God bless you, Morlo. I hope it evolves into something bigger. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> I'm gonna throw that in there. Ah, uh, today's podcast. It's is wonder. Rated it's wonderful working PG. with working with all guys. I have to. I have to say this. Whatever. <laughs> you've you've pointed out phallic things too. Oh yeah, not on newscast. Not, that's, uh, not... that's why we have cloister. That's fair. Oh. <laughs> Moving on. Yes. You know it's yes. funny, every time we catch a cloister in this area, I always have to bring that up. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> He's not lying. I mean you just <laughs> Okay, I can't I can't thank say you, what I'm thinking. Wishy washy. Okay. Wishy washy <laughs> is one of the most interesting parts of this gen and you wouldn't imagine it from a fish like this but it's bringing a new mechanic to pokemon that we haven't seen before um wishiwashi is a really weak fish it looks like one of those fish from finding nemo yeah. i can't remember what it's called the one that transforms into a big fish but we'll get into that in just a second um it's eight inches it's teeny tiny um, but the big thing about this is once it hits a certain level, it turns into a school form and it turns into this massive beast of a fish. It is so cool looking. I agree. So cool looking. So it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. And they call it the demon of the sea. And that's its <laughs> official entry in the Pokedex. The demon of the sea. Ken, what are, what is your impression of this? I, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan and I love the way they rolled it out in the trailer. How, when they're showing it in the single form, it's up against a Gyarados that, like, you know, just destroys it. Yeah. But then it comes back with this, you know, the school form. It's just like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? I'm back. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it just crushes Gyarados. Uh, but I think it's really cool. I, I think it's a very, very cool concept. I, I love the fact that the single form, uh, it looks super pitiful. Yeah. And, you know, uh, very non-threatening. And then when you look at the school form, you're like, you know, it almost looks like a, like a boss or something. Like, it looks angry. It looks just, like, ready to go. It's really cool. Yeah. I'm really curious at this point because it's it's technically not an evolution. Um, right. But they are saying that it only does this once it hits a certain form. So, more or less, it's kind of an evolution. Yeah. Um, I understand that it's not always in this form, though. So, it, But it's definitely a new mechanic for Pokemon. I haven't seen anything like this yet. But this whole gen is like completely changing my idea of what Pokemon can be. So I'm all for this. I think it's a really cool looking Pokemon. Yeah. So dig it. we have Wishy Washy. Next, we have, oh my God, how do you pronounce this? Pukumuku? Kuku? <laughs> it's Pukumuku. So Pukumuku. I think, I think they call it Pukumuku for a reason because this is a very weird little Pokemon. Um, without actually seeing what this thing does um it's gonna be hard to explain um it is a little sea cucumber pokemon it has a little mouth on it that kind of looks like a butt um asterisk yeah little asterisk it looks like a little butthole 
I'm it looks really like sorry. it looks like a bean with an asterisk for a mouth, a mouth, two pink dots for eyes, and then it looks like six spikes that come up uh, parallel to each other on the top of it, and a with bunny a tail. bunny cotton tail in the back. The bunny cotton tail is the thing that throws me off a little bit because it looks that implies that it's like fuzzy. But everything about it is very just like smooth and spiky. Yeah. <laughs> the, the weird thing, and I don't even know if you've seen this yet. Oh. Um, it has an ability called Innards Out. And Innards Out, essentially he's got this, he, he can essentially, how do you say this? Like he uses his <laughs> guts to turn into a hand and it shoots out of his mouth and he can attack with this weird hand looking thing. Um, it's the most bizarre thing and you need to see it to kind of understand it. Um, I'll put a little gif below here of like this hand, like shooting out of his body. Well, have um, you seen a real sea, sea cucumber? I have, but I've never seen it do that. It does this weird thing. Does it, it does really? A, it does a very strange thing where these crazy long white tendrils come out of it. Okay. And like, it, you know, twice the length of its body. So obviously huh. with, with you know, the Pokemon, it takes shape and it's a hand and it has an attack. Yeah. But the actual sea cucumber, it just looks like these weird tendril strings, nasty stuff. And it's really funky, That's really good. strange. I do like how um, artists and just creators are constantly influenced by real creatures and sure. they go an even more creative route with the design. So that's a really cool, cool uh, fact there. I have no desire to ever see one of these things then. I, so. I'm kind of fascinated. I, would, I actually it. would completely be interested in seeing that. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, that that's that one. And uh, Innards Out is a brand new ability. It's, we've never seen it before in Pokemon. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, really quick, three other Pokemon that weren't in the trailer that got leaked via Korokoro. We saw Sunaba, which is a tiny little Sun Castle ghost Pokemon. Um, we saw, oh my god. It's, Shurn... No, it's Shiro Desuna. Shiro Desuna. Shiro Desuna. I, I'm sure they're going to change the name for the English release. That is another Sandcastle Pokemon, a ghost type. It apparently can uh, suck unsuspecting Pokemon into its sand trap, and it. I'm assuming it eats it, which is kind of badass in its own way. <laughs> um, and then we saw the Beware um, pre-evolution, which is Nuikogoma. Nuikoguma. Nuikoguma. <laughs> Which I guarantee they're going to change for the U.S. release. It's a little cute little teddy bear again. If you're watching the video cast, we'll put a little picture of what that looks like. Those were all from the Korra Korra leak, but we did not see those in the video. But next, we finally get to get into the other Alolan forms. And let's start with the lamest and move into the best. The lamest is Alolan Meowth. Ken, what's your opinion on Alolan Meowth? <sighs> you know, it's, it's you know, there, there's just not enough... There's not enough there. I mean, you know, when we saw, you know, Vulpix and Sandshrew, it was like, okay, it's just, it's them. They're just changing color. Yeah. Um, you know, with Meowth, it's like the stance is a little different. The color, you know, palette is slightly different, you know, but um, I'm not threatened yeah. at all by this, you know, and even like Meowth, you know, with the humor from the anime, uh, you kind of have that preconceived notion of, it being a comedian and kind of, you know, you know, that that's right, you know, yeah. <laughs> pretty good. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's it just, uh, the whole pose is kind of, kind of odd. So his backstory in this one is, um, on the Aloan islands, he was apparently like the pet of the Royal family and he became kind of a, a D bag and <laughs> he turned into a dark form Pokemon and he was, he's spoiled rotten. And that's pretty much it. For me, like from a, like an aesthetics point of view, he doesn't look all that much different. He looks a little paler, and his eyes are a little bit more closed. Right. Whatever. It's cute. Yeah. What about you? What do you think? Uh, I'm pretty much in the same boat as you guys. Um, I see definitely a to me the the changing color. There's a big difference because you go from this like dark beige or cream to almost a gray with purplish hues. So to me, the color is a big difference, but I don't feel like you said, Ken, threatened by this. Yeah. And um, I don't see any major differences. So this to me does not hold my interest. Are we going to see an Alolan Persian, I guess, is that we, we I think we've already kind of discovered and we're going to get into that here when we get down to the next two Pokemon that just because there is an evolved form of a Pokemon doesn't mean that the pre-evolved form also has an Alolan form. Um, 
So we can move into Marowak. So Alolan Marowak. And I think this one is the second coolest. And you, I might be in the minority on this one because the next one is just I'm, I'm overly biased about. But Alolan Marowak is a fire ghost Pokemon. It's incredibly cool because it's a fire spinner. If you're familiar with Hawaii at all, you'll know about their, their fire spinning uh, traditions that they have there. He looks really cool. Um, I think a lot of it's subtle too, but it, it's remarkably a, a very cool looking Pokemon. Yeah. I I feel the, the exact same way as you. Um, definitely a lot cooler than Meowth. This, I mean, he has a whole new aesthetic to him. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm all on board for Marowak. It's my favorite of the three. Is uh, it? Ooh. It's, uh, <laughs> I knew. I knew it was coming. <laughs> but no, just, I mean, it's it's amazing that just adding the flames on the bones, yeah. um, it gives it that kind of ghost type appeal, um, but also fits perfect with the Alolan, you know, theme of island and fire ritual and fire yeah. dancing and fire spinning and all that. So uh, I think it was just spot on and they, they saw a good opportunity to really grasp the, you know, regional aspect and they nailed it. Yeah. Interesting part about this is in the trailer, we see a standard Cubone evolving into an Alolan Marowak. So again, that is kind of leading me to believe that just because we have the evolved form of Marowak, it doesn't mean that we're going to see an Alolan form of Cubone, which is sad in its own right. But since this is a ghost Pokemon, I wonder if it's like going to have more of like a mom figure to poor little Cubone. If you guys know the, the, the tremendously sad story about why Cubone wears... The skull on its head. It's the skull of its dead mother. It's like the most twisted story ever. It is. Wasn't there this list of the five most disturbing Pokemon stories? Yeah. And it, I think he was yeah. on there. Yeah. There is the original like Pokedex was and, and in Gen 2, there was some really sick things in there. I think my, my least favorite one was Hypno. Um, Hypno's a creeper. Hypno totally. would hypnoti- hypnotize kids. Yeah. And they, I think all it said in there is like they would like never be seen again. Yeah. So leads me to believe he's murdering kids. <laughs> They're all in his basement. <laughs> and the worst part about it is where we live, our entire oh, apartment complex is surrounded it's by hypnos infested and drowsies. Like that's what our that's what our area is. I mean, I don't want my three year old daughter marching out the door with a psychic type Pokemon <laughs> swimming, you know, swinging a, a or, watch. Or maybe so. a whole swarm of them doing that. God help us all. <laughs> But there we have a low and Marowak, and again, finally. Oh, let me announce. Let me announce this one. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just That's kidding. Fine. I'm not going to take this away from you. We have the the best of them, in my humble <laughs> the opinion. Best. We have a low and Raichu, who surfs on his tail, which is the greatest thing ever. He is now a electric psychic type Pokemon. He can fly apparently. He has psychic abilities. His ears remind me of another Pokemon's ears, and I can't think of it for the life of me right now. Um, is it Cicero or something? Hold on. I honestly cannot remember. Um, I love this Pokemon, and it reminds me of something from my childhood. There was an episode of Pokemon in the original anime where Ash runs into an old man with a old Pikachu, and you could tell it was a super old Pikachu is because if you've ever if you've ever had a dog yeah. or a cat, when they get super old, their eyes start turning this glassy blue. Yeah. And this Pikachu that surfed with this man had these glassy blue eyes. And now we have this glassy blue eyed Raichu who's a surfer who I'd like to believe like somehow evolved from that little Pikachu from the original anime. At least that's what I'd like to think. But I love this thing. I do too. That my instant favorite too. I couldn't help it. I love Pikachu. I love all the evolutions of Pikachu, including oh. Raichu. And um, obviously, I'm not as much of a diehard fan as you are for Raichu. But I personally love this form even more than the original form of Raichu. The entire idea that a Pokemon can ride its own tail. It's both adorable and practical. It's like, practical. Yes. It's practical. Like he's carrying around something that helps him get around. And it's just, it's adorable. And um, the color palette just uh, wins me over automatically. It's very subdued type of colors, but it works, especially for the terrain that yeah. he's in. Yeah. Um, it's very chill and mellow and he can blend in easily with the surroundings. And I think that's important. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm yeah. honest to God, so happy. 
I think the same thing. It looks very organic. Yes. Uh, it looks like it fits, it fits the, the, the theme. And the, the second I saw it, I messaged you on Facebook. I was like, what do you think? Because I, like, I was like, I wonder if this could go either way, if he's going to be like, this is sacrilege, <laughs> or you know, you're going to be all about it. So I'm I was glad driving. I was driving when it, when it happened, and my, our, our team got an article out on it, and I lost my mind. Um, just the morning before, I was talking with Lauren about the what I would do if there was an Alolan Raichu. Yeah. I'm like, if there was an Alolan Raichu, I would lose it. I would lose my and mind. And he lost it. And I did. Yeah, <laughs> now that you can get into Gondacris. Oh, actually, before we get into yeah. that, there is, and Ken, you might know this. I, I don't want to say you won't know this, okay. but... I don't know if you were into it like I was. Yeah. In the game Pokemon Yellow, you could get a surfing Pikachu. And there was a surfing Pikachu minigame that was a blast. That was half the reason I bought Pokemon Yellow was to play the surfing Pikachu minigame on Pokemon Yellow. But one of the cool things is you could transfer that game, um, that surfing Pikachu yeah. to Pokemon Stadium. And you can get a surfing Pikachu in Pokemon Stadium. You could evolve your surfing Pikachu into a Raichu. And you could have a surfing Raichu that surfed on its own tail. Okay. In Pokemon yeah. Stadium. So that was the you first time you could before. see that. Yeah, you Which, mentioned that before. So this isn't technically the first time we've seen it, but it's definitely, in my opinion, the coolest. So did you have Pokemon Yellow, by the way? I absolutely did. And uh, had did you get your Pokemon. Pikachu. You did? Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Yep. You have to. Oh, I was yep. going to say you with your history. Of course you did. <laughs> had to. Had I can't to. I can't remember what the steps were. I Did you get the surfing Pikachu from Pokemon Stadium and then you had to move it to Pokemon Yellow? <sighs> It was. So, I remember it was some convoluted way that I was so mad as a kid having to do. I don't think it came from Stadium. I don't know. I remember something uh, like you had to like do all these challenges in Pokemon Stadium, then you could yeah. unlock them and transfer them to your game. But it's been so long. Yeah. I have the Snap Station back there, so you know I have Pokemon Stadium sitting in there right now. So maybe I'll test the theory later. It's in that TV right over there in the background with nice. next, to that, okay. next to that blind that's killing me that's cracked open right there. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah the, we we've got we've got Stadium back there because we play the uh, mini games all the time. I love that game. Yeah. Yep. There isn't there like a sushi serving mini game. The sushi mini game is the best one of, of all of them. It's, <laughs> it's the it's only the one best. I remember. You're like lick of tongues and you have to like yeah yeah that's it. Stuff. It's so good. What a game. Yep. All right, finally. Um, actually, no, I want to mention um, Gondacris. And then our friend AK Shop, too, did a, a custom of um, the Alolan form of Raichu. But Gondacris ended up making me a Alolan Raichu custom amiibo, and it melts my heart. I can't wait to get it. I'm going to display it very proudly. It's beautiful. Yes, and I'll take lots of photos of it for you. And if they ever come out with an Alolan Raichu plush, and I'm sure they will, yeah. I will buy it the moment I can. So Nice. Finally, we're going to move into Team Skull. Uh, my least favorite part about this entire thing. No way! They're awesome! I thought it was actually because I hate it. the trailer opened with Team Skull. Like, the first portion of the trailer was Team Skull. And I was pretty fascinated by it. It's a kind of a fun new vibe for a Pokemon series. They have, like, their own anthem with lyrics, by the way, which was weird. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. The The... The campy, cheesy, yeah. you know, kind of like uh, Malibu's Most Wanted thing going on is absolutely hilarious. I, 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 I like Rocket. it. <laughs> I miss Team Rocket. I really just miss Team Rocket. Yeah, yeah. I don't. But this, this is this is a whole new area. Like I they, know. they uh, but I like them. I think they're awesome. I think they're awesome. So with Team Skull, we have quite a few interesting new characters. Their their leader is like this Flavor Flav looking son of a gun with a tracksuit, this big gold skull. Um, it looks like he has some sort of beef with the like other professors like on the mm -hmm. island. So it's definitely an interesting thing. Um, if you're curious to see what these guys look like, we'll put some images on the screen here. Otherwise, you can go to NintendoWire.com and you can see our full coverage on Team Skull. Um, Again, for me, I guess it's my least favorite part of all the announcements, but I guess I'm in the minority. Yeah. Yeah. It's your, it's yeah. your boy, Guzma. He's like, <laughs> my God. It's, it's I, I don't know. I, I think that the, you know, the outfits are awesome. I, I love that there's little flashes and little hits of color yeah. um, in there. And I, I think that from a kid's perspective, yes. it's yeah, easy to identify, like, those are the bad guys. And, you know, if I were to dress like that, my mom would get upset. So I'd be a bad guy. So I, you know, it just, they're just so easily identifiable. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know. They just, they just look like they're, you know, jerks, you know, without even having to say anything. You know, I think of them as eye candy as villains. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. 
yeah. that's exactly what people are attracted to. Because just like you said, they have the pops of color. And that's why when the trailer first opened with them, I was immediately drawn to the screen because of the pops of color. And I thought, I've never seen anything like this in, a, in Pokemon before. So that's why, or at least as far as like a uh, big group goes, who's a villain. So uh, that makes me excited about it. Yeah. It was an interesting bit of news. Yeah. For sure. But... We have a long way to go till November. I'm sure there's going to be even more announcements coming soon. We still technically don't know what even the next evolutions of the, the starters are going to be. There's definitely some rumors. I'm not going to touch on those right now because we could just be here for hours if we talked about the rumors. Um, but expect more information soon, and I'm sure we're going to be dedicating yet another podcast to everything Sun and Moon. 